When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. Donald Trump has made illegal immigration his signature issue since day one of his presidential bid. And we all know that he has promised to build a wall and make Mexico pay for it. I'm not gonna pay for that wall. Yesterday, Trump made a last minute trip to Mexico City where he showed off his negotiation skills in a meeting with Mexico's president, Enrique Peña Nieto. Number one, ending illegal immigration. Number two, having a secure border is a sovereign right and mutually beneficial. Number three, dismantling drug cartels and ending the movement of illegal drugs, weapons, and funds across our border. Improving NAFTA, number four. Number five, keep manufacturing wealth in our hemisphere. Now this was a very big day for Donald Trump who was looking very presidential, I might add, in his meeting with the Mexican president. And, you know, I, I think Donald Trump looked like a U.S. president. He acted like a U.S. president. And he was very diplomatic, but at the same time, he stood his ground, never wavering in his position. Donald Trump says there will be a wall. No more amnesty. No more sanctuary cities. And no more anchor babies. And if you are an illegal alien with a criminal record or have committed crimes inside the United States, you will be deported immediately. That was his message to the president of Mexico yesterday. And then Trump reinforced his position in his highly anticipated immigration speech last night in Phoenix, Arizona. To all the politicians, donors, and special interests, hear these words from me and all of you today. There is only one core issue in the immigration debate, and that issue is the well-being of the American people. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, that's what most Americans want in a U.S. president. Someone that stands up for us, we the people, and does not change his message. Now, later in that historic speech from Phoenix, Arizona, Trump went on to bring out the mothers of Americans whose children were killed by illegal immigrants. And if you're one of those people who have been conned by the establishment media into believing Trump is some kind of, well, evil racist demon, you need to watch these speeches in their entirety, unedited, because the truth is, I think Donald Trump has a heart of gold. Meanwhile, he continues to be attacked on all fronts by the current administration, by the Hillary campaign, and of course, vicious attacks as usual on all sides of the mainstream media who want to control the narrative and turn Donald Trump into the total villain. The presidential election process is beginning to reek of corruption. Homeland Security Chief Jay Johnson recently determined that our election process should be overseen by the Department of Homeland Security because it has been dubbed critical infrastructure, akin to the financial sector and the power grid. Truth be told, Mr. Johnson, this election is critical to the total emergence of a totalitarian new world order that has almost crossed the finish line. Meanwhile, a desperate psyop to spin Hillary into the Oval Office is fully underway as Matt Lauer will host a propagandized non-debate whereas the Daily Caller reports it will be a one-hour forum where Clinton and Trump will answer questions about national security military affairs and veterans issues in front of an audience mainly made up of members of the military the two candidates will not be on the stage at the same time but will instead go back to back. This after Trump dominated the last 48-hour news cycle with true presidential aplomb. We are united by our support for democracy, 
a great love for our people and the contributions of millions of Mexican Americans to the United States. We agreed on the importance of ending the illegal flow of drugs, cash, guns, and people across our border and to put the cartels out of business. We are going to uphold the laws of the nation and defend our sovereignty and security, and we are going to defend our border. And now with Hillary sinking in the polls, as Rasmussen reports, Hillary Clinton's post-convention lead has disappeared, putting her behind Donald Trump for the first time nationally since mid-July. The latest weekly Rasmussen reports White House Watch National Telephone and Online survey shows Trump with 40% support to Clinton's 39% among likely U.S. voters, after Clinton led 42% to 38% a week ago. As a result, the globalist empire is fiercely striking back. Certainly takes more than trying to make up for a year of insults and insinuations by dropping in on our neighbors for a few hours and then flying home again. That is not how it works. It's like, it's like anthrax dormant in our soil. We are a nation of immigrants who turn on immigrants as scapegoats when normal politics doesn't work anymore. And so when the wind's just right and the host is weak, just wait. The blame the immigrants' nativism that is always around at some level, it comes back. It comes out of the secret societies. It comes roaring out once again out of the dark. I think it was kind of a diplomatic embarrassment. We'll get to his speech later, but he's been talking for a year about we're going to build a wall and Mexico's going to pay for it. And then he goes and he sits down and he goes eyeball to eyeball with the president of Mexico. And what, he forgets suddenly to bring it up, or he's too afraid to bring it up? And riding on the coattails of the PSYOP, trolls upon trolls echoing half-baked disinformation in an effort to chip away Trump's emerging bold domination of the real issues. The Daily Caller reports, liberals did not like Donald Trump's immigration speech in Arizona. Some even attacked the angel moms, parents whose children have been killed by illegal immigrants. Mark McKinnon wrote, Trump surrounded on Phoenix stage by angel moms who say their kids were murdered by illegal immigrants. This is pretty much a hate rally. Joy Reid wrote, the way they call people illegals, so dehumanized. Humanizing. The mainstream media, in true Goebbels zeal, even blurred out Trump's name in an interview with a man who recently rescued a baby from a hot car. Again, propaganda was legalized in America in 2013 with the death of the Smith-Munt Act, with the only rational explanation one could surmise to be used on the American people. Propaganda is running wild, ladies and gentlemen, and a cabal of impetuous globalists are pushing their narrative into overdrive. John Bound for Infowars.com. So while Donald Trump meets with the Mexican president, Hillary Clinton meets with special interest and corporate lobbyist. Business as usual for crooked Hillary. And as we approach the much anticipated presidential debates, we now learn that the rules have changed for Hillary. Once again, in her favor as the establishment does everything they can to make sure that she doesn't make a complete ass of herself debating Donald Trump live on national television. Joe Biggs joins us now to tell us more about the upcoming town hall forum between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And this is this is really not an official debate, right? More like a, a preseason, preseason football NFL game. game yeah. All right, what, what do we expect to happen? Well, this is going to be the commander in chief forum that's going to be on September 7th. The interesting thing about it is who's moderating it. Matt Lauer. Matt Lauer is also a person who's been a notable past member of the Clinton Global Initiative. He's a political insider. I mean, there's tons of pictures with him and her <laughs> nestled up, having fun, giving you know, having fun, giving high fives, hanging out. And yet, this is going to be fair in any kind of way. And the most important thing about it is that they will not be on stage at the same time. Yeah, that's that's. It looks like they stacked this up against Donald Trump. So, 
So let me get this straight. So they'll bring one of them out first. They'll never be together standing next to each other. You know it's going to be scripted. She's going to know every question that's thrown her direction beforehand, and she's going to rehearse every single answer. Meanwhile, my guess is that Donald Trump will probably have more of the hardball questions thrown at him. Yeah, my, my prediction is it's going to start off. Matt Lauer is going to introduce the whole thing. They're going to bring out Donald Trump first. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump's going to get all the hard questions, actual real questions about stuff. But they're also going to try to trick him into ways that where Hillary can attack him later on in that event. And like you said, I believe Hillary will probably have all those questions. Uh, ahead and they'll of probably time. work together. Matt Lauer oh, being collude. a Clinton insider, be. they're going to work together and they probably rehearsed this and gone through ways to kind of. Uh, and, and I think one of the reasons why this is going to be uh, separate like this and not on stage at the same time is this is going to be happening in front of an audience of Iraq and Afghanistan veterans of America. It's a group that I'm a member of as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be compiled of a lot of hardcore veterans. And, and the majority see, of them, the vast majority of them support Donald Trump. Yeah. And, and what, does every, what does every veteran want? They want to see America kick ass, mm -hmm. kick butt. And if Donald Trump gets up there, his first debate one-on-one -on -one with her in front of those veterans, with that, that emotion behind, that patriotic uh, essence that is patriotism, the Americanism, she will get her butt handed to her so quick that her head will spin. And Donald Trump will simply just humiliate her. I mean, look at this. In Mexico, Trump goes to Mexico. Does Clinton go? She, she was invited. She was invited. Two people were invited, only one showed up. Mm -hmm. Guess who went to Louisiana? Donald Trump. Same thing. Hillary Clinton didn't even show up. She made a phone call. And notice how Trump, who was very presidential, got a warm wel welcome in Mexico, a country where he feels he probably is hated by tons of people because some of the comments he's made and the fact that the mainstream uh, media is pushing this narrative that he's one of the most hated people by Latinos, which is complete and total BS because I've been to the border. I've talked to the people, Latinos for Trump. Tons of Hispanics. Well, especially on the, border, on the border towns, they're the majority, vast majority, overwhelmingly support Donald yeah. Trump. They want to protect their families and their neighbors and their communities just as much as you and I. And I saw some of the video footage when Trump went into Mexico. The mainstream media framed it like he was going into hostile territory, unfriendlies everywhere. Those people were lining up on the streets, waving to him. And it was it was a very receptive it was a warm greeting, welcome. a very warm welcome. And and also Mexico's president, he was he was very gracious to Donald Trump and vice versa. There was it was a great meeting. It makes Trump look to the rest of the world and the country like the good negotiator that he truly is. The guy knows how to, to negotiate. His entire adult life was spent high level negotiations in all these high level business meetings. So the guy knows what he's doing. Well, the Mexican president even said that they feel like they gain ground in the uh, meeting between them two, mm -hmm. that they feel like there's probably a stronger understanding of each other and what they're looking for and what's going to happen. Others uh, talk about, uh, you know, whether or not the the wall is going to be paid for by Mexico. No one's really clarified uh, what and, they and the said about And the mainstream media that. has been real tough on Trump because of that, because they never discussed that. He's not president yet. It's it's now's not the time to discuss it. But here's the key thing that I picked up when watching it is the fact that look when President Obama goes and talks to other foreign leaders. What does he do? He bows down. He, he submits like the good little dog that he is. Mm -hmm. he, he rolls over and wants his, uh, his belly petted like Barkley does whenever I walk in because he knows he's smaller. He just rolls over. Mm -hmm. Trump approached the president of Mexico like an equal human being. They shook hands and had an intelligent conversation, had an adult conversation, mm -hmm. and tried to find common ground. And Hillary Clinton is sitting around with her handlers shooting her up with injections while like Huma Aberdeen's running her Twitter account the whole time bashing Donald Trump that he's this racist and oh you know a trip to Mexico is not going to help you out we need to build stronger build uh, bridges not walls I'm like okay you're the most vile evil human being to ever walk this earth you're the last person that needs to be attacking anybody especially about their character uh, whether or not they're racist she's made so many comments that are pandering to whatever community she's in. Like when she goes to Southern State, she puts down her Southern accent. She goes on a hip hop radio show. Well, I got my hot sauce in my bag. Mm -hmm. And then she talks to black people like they're freaking lower than the scum of the earth. Yeah. She is a horrible person. Trump might say some things that you don't like, but guess what? I'd rather have a president who's going to be honest to me and tell it to my face instead of sit there, get away from the podium and go and talk trash to the rest of her crew. Well, I'd rather these, know what I'm getting. These two candidates can be more 
further apart from each other as far as ideology. I mean, they are night and day. And, and, and this is what we're facing right now. Everything Trump stands for, Hillary Clinton is the exact opposite. She wants open borders. She wants amnesty for all. She wants sanctuary cities. And Trump said that in his uh, speech in Arizona after he left Mexico, that he will not have amnesty. There will be no amnesty whatsoever. No, he's not wavering in his position. Yeah. He's made it perfectly clear. So I, I like that. He's got a backbone. This is a candidate that we can all get behind. And I trust him to make the right decisions. Like I said, he's, he's never changed his position. He got so many donations last night that his website shut down. Oh, that's good news. Good yeah. news. All right. Thank you, Joe Biggs. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. We will be right back. Stick around. In Four's Nightly News will return right after this. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. Today is Thursday, September 1st, 2016. Here's a quick look. What's coming up? Tonight, we look at Trump's Mexican summit, so effective that even his enemies praised it. Washington Post said subdued, even solemn, he owned the proceedings, established the agenda, laid out a five-point plan for a bilateral relationship, even chose who got to ask the questions during the press conference. Even Bill Kristol said people are kidding themselves if they don't see that today was a good day for Trump. And coming up September 7th, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump will address the same audience for the first time, an audience made up mostly of members of the military. But they won't be on the stage at the same time. And it will be moderated by Matt Lauer, listed on the Clinton Global Initiative's website as a notable past member of the Clinton group. You know, like Anderson Cooper and Katie Couric. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. You said in a speech today you're afraid this election is going to be rigged. I've been hearing about it for a long time. I hope the Republicans get out there and watch very closely. This new poll is showing a big convention bounce for Hillary Clinton. Following her nomination at the Democratic National Convention, Hillary Clinton now leads it. Donald Trump, 50% to 42%. That's a seven-point jump from last week. You see, he's supposed to just sit there and let him steal it. But he didn't sit there, so they failed. And they think they're going to have another stolen general election in front of everybody at high noon, and we're just going to sit here and go along with it. We're not. I'm going to fight it. Trump's going to fight it. You're going to fight it. Bob Mulholland from Chico, California. I'm a DNC member, thus a super delegate to the National Convention. First of all, it's rigged. And I'm afraid the election's going to be rigged. I have to be honest. And the way we work is that uh, anybody who gets 15% more in election gets delegates. So this election will go all the way to California. Sanders will end up with well over 1,000 delegates, and Hillary will get the nomination. Hillary Clinton, like said from the start. Hillary Clinton has had every advantage, every break given to her from the very beginning by this Democratic Party. It has been rigged. It is clearly the case that when given truth serum, Debbie Wasserman <laughs> Schultz vastly prefers <laughs> Hillary Clinton to be the nominee, obviously, and... To the extent there are things that can be done institutionally and marginally to facilitate that outcome, they are being done. If Hillary steals the nomination and then she openly is engaged in chicanery and things don't add up with Trump, you have to say it must be thrown out. The political parties choose their nominee, not the general public, uh, contrary to popular belief. <laughs> then why bother holding the primaries? That's a very good question. WikiLeaks has dumped nearly 20,000 hacked emails from the DNC. We're talking about the report of leaked DNC emails showing an effort to undermine Bernie Sanders during the primaries. The American people are sick and tired of hearing about your damn emails. Thank you. When did the press see it as their role to, pro to protect the prerogative of the powerful? Actually, I think that's part of it. And we're not going to recognize Queen Hillary if there's evidence of fraud. And guess what there is? She stole the nomination. I want to thank Bernie Sanders. If he would have just not done anything, just, just go home, go to sleep, relax. He would have been a hero. But he made a deal with the devil. She's the devil. The media has created the perception that the voters will decide the nomination, and that's the concept. That's the conflict here. We, we the feel like we is, live in a democratic society. What you're telling me is it's not a democratic society, and your votes don't right. necessarily matter because it's a democratic representation. Crooked Hillary thinks they're going to pull what they did on Mitt Romney. Mm -mm, lady, isn't going to happen. That's why her campaign head, her chief strategist, said this is dangerous. What Trump's doing. You're right. It is dangerous, isn't it? Actually standing up to you. I continue to believe Mr. Trump, Trump will not be president. And I'm telling you, November 8th, we better be careful because that election is going to be rigged. Yes. 
I think the Vermont, uh, Republican nominee is unfit uh, to serve as president. And I hope the Republicans are watching closely or it's going to be taken away from us. You're going to be hearing a lot more about this, ladies and gentlemen, because Donald Trump's not going to let you be robbed, myself be robbed, or him be robbed or his family. There has to come a point at which you say, enough. You know what's getting blown up right now? I'm going to make this announcement. Unequivocally, I'm sure of it. It hit me like a speed bullet freight train going downhill this morning. Hit me so hard that I was stunned for an hour or two. Ran over me like a thunderbolt. The main assault's on. Everything else has been a test. Everything else has been a beta test. Everything you've seen with the globalists studying cultures, societies, economies, getting everything rigged from the stock market to interest rates to currency rates. Admittedly, all rigged now. They now have major newspapers, uh, have computers writing news stories for them. I told people about that 10 years ago. The CIA developed it. Now it's ubiquitous. The ships are going to robot. The cars are going to robot. The trucks are going to robot. The technocracy is in place. The new world order is now officially in 2016. That's what the Supreme Court justice was telling Drudge. Get ready. It's all going to start next year. And it is. They're going from beta to 1.0. That means new world order. This is it. We are in the new world order. We have crossed the line as of right now. In fact, mark the date. 9-1. September 1st, 2016. They've turned on the technocracy, the world government. And I've got all the articles uh, in front of me where the internet censorship is exploding, where their, Germany's getting ready to collapse. They are rolling their whole thing out. They are censoring. When a guy saves a baby and is a hero, they blur the Trump off his shirt on the news. I mean, they, they have armies of sycophant humans who are busily selling out their fellow humans, thinking they're going to get a slot at the table. Even though they're setting up automated algorithm AI systems to replace them. It'd be like if you were a chef that was uh, cooking for cannibals and your, your food stock was, you know, a pen of 30 or 40 people. And, and some of them were your family in there, but that's okay. And, and, and every day you knock somebody else on the head and then you, you know, they bring them in and you cut them up. And then you cook them and you, and you serve them to your masters upstairs. You don't really get a look at. You just kind of you know, send the plates on, you know, through through a conveyor belt and something in there eats them. And then finally one day, you, you know, you get your little teletype out, you know, telling you, oh, uh, we want you to train this individual to... Uh, Help us cook to prepare the meat, to prepare the feast. And you say, well, I'm, I'm the chef. I don't need any help. Oh, just please train this new chef because we've been looking at you and we think you're fattened up now and it's time to eat you too. And you dumbasses are sitting there with a pen of your fellow humans that you're serving up and you don't understand your neck's on the conveyor belt because you've been taught how to be a synthetic sociopath or psychopath. That's what all this TV and murder and the simulations and you know, the shoot 'em up games and all of it and the degradation, the movies and, 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 and the TV is just to get everybody ready to accept the implosion of the human condition. I, I'm really blown away by the social engineers and, the, and, and I mean, they've got a really, really nasty, nasty, nasty comportment. They are 
the type of people that grab your kid out of the backyard and torture him for a month in a dungeon. I mean, that's what we're dealing with here. And it's come out in Europe where the, the, you know, the top politicians and leaders have like basements with toddlers they torture for months and rape and kill. I mean, you're like, what in the world are you? That's who runs things. And to them, it's pretty to see breast cancer up a couple thousand percentage points. It's fun to see autism up tens of thousands of percentage points. It's fun to see the once great and mighty human condition brought low and to see us stumbling around shuffling zombies. I, I just can't believe it. <laughs> and where are the men? Where are the people standing up? And it's here. It's on. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of articles a day from the establishment on how they're going to censor and how they are censoring and how glorious it is. And maybe we should start arresting people we disagree with. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Oh, yeah. That sounds fun. And, and, and it's weird, like the zombie trendies and stuff are in a haze and they've got this operating system of tyranny now and they're getting off on you and you see them hopping around like just just feeling the evil and they're like oh this feels good imagine being a soulless psychopath and then think what a soulless creature wants to do it wants to amass control and power this is Owen Schroyer from Infowars.com. We are inside the William P. Clement State Office Building. There's about to be a hearing, the Hart Intercivic Hearing. We're going to hear from the American people how they feel about the implementation of the Hart Electronic Voting System in their counties. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody that showed up. This is an absolutely amazing turnout from all over the state of Texas. I don't think this is a legal hearing. It wasn't notified. We weren't notified in time, and I don't think you had the notice according to state laws. At 11.13, somebody sent me notification about this hearing that is so very important. I couldn't mobilize anybody. I couldn't review any of the notes. I had an hour and a half to find child care, wash myself, and get in the car and get here. There's a couple of issues with Heart Inner Civic. We know they have been lobbying counties and lobbying your office, and they are not registered lobbyists with the state of Texas. That is another illegality that is being operated by the Secretary of State's office. To not print um, tallies, and that's a violation of the state law. There is a blatant disregard for state law. Why is the Secretary of State's office not following Texas election code? Consider a race where one can vote for multiple candidates. Say the voter can choose three of seven. If the voter has selected three candidates and tries to select a fourth, the touch rider will automatically deselect the first candidate selected. And I don't want to see my country turn into some banana republic with these electronic machines. We cannot verify. I don't write code, but I can count paper ballots. It always boils down to the same thing. This is secret vote counting. The people of, of our country are realizing that if there's a computer involved, it can be hacked. The people who cast the votes don't decide an election. The people who count the votes do, and that was Stalin. Failure to follow state law will result in, a, in grounds for the federal government to come in and control our elections. We continue with paper ballots. We have paper ballots. Go back to paper voting. A voter verified paper ballot. Paper ballots. Hand counted paper ballots. Um, I agree we need to have a paper trail. And I mean paper. Paper ballot or paper trail. I would like for us to return to hand counted paper ballots. We want paper ballots. Hand counted paper ballots. The biggest problem I have with these electronic machines is there is no paper ballot. Elections are the bedrock of our government. And if we don't have honest and fair elections in this state and in this country, we have nothing. People died during the wars to, because of the vote. Why can't we send our officials to jail? 
that are doing these illegal things. Thank you. It's against the law. It's against the Constitution. Why can't we send them to jail? If Mr. Ingram does not retract all these things that he's doing, waiving these paper backup records, we want his resignation. My name is Owen Troyer. I'm a reporter from Infowars.com. And I wasn't planning on speaking here today, but after hearing the comments and seeing these people come out, I thought I would at least uh, share some thoughts. Outside of the possibility of these machines being hacked or outside of the possibility of these machines not working properly, which many of these people have illustrated very eloquently and we have case studies of, for the Secretary of State to move forward with the implementation of the new hard voting system, would be a complete rejection of the wishes of we the people of Texas and the people that have come here today. And it would be a complete rejection of the state of Texas's constitution. And to me, that is the first step towards tyranny. Now, I don't know what kind of access is gonna be allowed to the video shot uh, by the representations from the Secretary of State here today, but I promise you that this video and, and these comments will be released on Infowars.com. So if the Secretary of State decides to go ahead and move forward implementing this system, ignore the people's wishes for paper balloting, we will get this information out there. The people will not be... This is Ashley Beckford reporting for Infowars.com. I'm here at the University of Texas at Austin, and I'm here to find out if people actually care about three recent disturbing stories that were linked on the DrudgeReport.com. One has to do with the federalization of police. George Soros is actually funding it. Another is that the federal elections may be overtaken by Homeland Security. They may be there overseeing elections to make sure there isn't, quote, election fraud. And lastly, I want to know if people care that the internet is about to be taken away from ICANN, the U.S. governmental body, and transferred to the U.N. Let's find out. He's a billionaire, and he's actually trying to uh, donate money toward the federalization of police. What do you think about that? Do you think the police should be militarized and they should have all these military vehicles and have total control taken away from the local government? I feel like there needs to be a silver lining established. Uh, the police force needs to use it to an extent where it, it maintains the safety of the people, but not excessive use. What we've seen in the past few months of excessive force by the police, uh, if they use it to a certain extent to where it's beneficial for society, then I think we should be on the right track. Billionaires and you know different corporations who really want to seize control of the American electorate, and one way is by you know banning free speech on the internet and then coming in with the militarization of police, you know martial law. So what do you think about that? Um. I think that's bad. <laughs> yeah, um, I feel definitely that there should not be any controls on the internet. Like, I think our electorate's already corrupt enough that really we shouldn't be trying to make it more. And the militarization of police is absolutely ridiculous. We do not need to have police shooting people like every other day. It could be a danger because uh, maybe local people could have uh, the people the people of that place is interest in mind rather than a big government like deciding what people need and what people you know need to follow do you think that it's good to have police federalized or do you think that they should remain local uh, remain local okay. What do you think about uh, Homeland Security actually taking control or overseeing elections in this country this year since it's such a contentious election? Mm, I don't know, like, if they're just there to, like, keep peace, I mean, I guess there's not really anything we could do about it. Well, uh... I don't know much about that either. Whenever you give up uh, privacy for security, you receive neither. So that's what I think about it. So I think it's a danger to have local control taken away and given to a federal or you know international body. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. I wasn't aware of that. Um, that's the first I've heard of that. Okay. Um, so again, I can't really respond without really knowing. I, I, Okay. Um, in general, um, I don't 
So it doesn't sound good to me. What do you think about Homeland Security potentially overseeing the elections this year? They're saying because it's such a contentious election, we need to treat this election kind of like we treat the power grid. It's a critical infrastructure. So we need to take control of security for that. What do you think about that? I think that's terrifying in a way because elections are supposed to be... Uh the people declaring who they want as their leader as opposed to anyone else doing that. So what terrifies you about that? I don't know if I like a government agency coming up and telling me who should be leading us as a like I want my own voice to be heard. Whichever uh, benefits the election right now because it's a decisive election, we're putting a person in office for the next four years, so whatever helps the most, we should go with that action. But what do you think about the U.S. actually giving up control of the Internet from ICANN to the United Nations later this year? They're doing that? Yes, they are. Obama uh, said, you know, let's give up our national sovereignty, basically, of the Internet and give it to the United Nations. What do you think about the Internet being taken over by the U.N.? Do you think that that's a good thing for the Internet to be taken away from ICANN, which is the U.S. governing body, and be given to the U.N.? Um, it depends what the U.N. does with it. Well, they want to have an Internet ID, so sometimes, like, if people are offensive or they use, quote, hate speech or whatever they may say, they may ban them from actually accessing the Internet completely. I think I would not support that because if the ID is there to ban hate speech, it could also be used to track down other people who may be discriminated against. Right, and also it's violating our First Amendment because the fact of the matter is, you know, we're giving over our control, our sovereignty to a foreign body. No, I believe that we should uh, retain our constitutional rights, our freedom of speech, uh, and all the, other amendment, uh, all the other freedoms that we have. We should be able to retain those. That's why we live in America, the greatest country in the world. Well, in this era of information overload, it's becoming incredibly easy to spread false information. It's so easy to just skim through the headlines uh, and press retweet or send out to your trusted friends. And then you're the one that ends up looking like a total idiot. Now, Margaret, I'm sure most of us have fallen victim to this a time or two. Um, some of these fake agencies do this, of course, for the clicks and the ad revenue, but there are actually some nefarious actors out there who are spreading this dis disinformation on purpose. That's right. So what we're talking about specifically, there was a Soros video that was leaked. It was taped and heavily edited at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. And it sounded like he said that they were going to steal the election. Now, had we run with that story and published it, they would have then re promptly released the transcript and go, okay, you guys are a fake news agency. Look at what you did. You can't even tell that this was a heavily edited, edited video. And uh, producers were able to determine that it was. And then we obviously didn't do a story on it. But had we done, you know, you see pieces like this. They're supposed to be comical, like the fried rat that KFC does that turns out to be a hoax. But something like this, you lose credibility if, right. you, do, if you take the bait. Right. And now this video is actually featured in the Trump subreddit, The Donald. Uh, there's a whole line there of people kind of taking the bait here on this video. And so basically it purports to show George Soros saying Trump's going to win in a landslide, but he doesn't have the electoral vote, so Clinton's going to win. And these are the kinds of red meat stories that conservatives or libertarians, people are going to run with. And we had so many people send us this video saying, report on this, report on this, because they know that we hate George Soros. Let's go ahead and play a little bit of the video so you can see what we're talking about. I think it's all, uh, it's going to lead to a, a, a landslide for Donald Trump in, in the popular vote, not in the electoral vote. So I know it's hard to tell because of the way George Soros just sort of mumbles like an evil Cretan, but his lips are not moving saying Donald Trump. Uh, you can see that they altered that to, to, to make it appear as though he's saying Donald Trump. He's actually saying Hillary Clinton. And this video actually came out in January of 2016. Uh, Bloomberg reported on it, Soros Clinton to win popular vote in a landslide. And so having this video making the rounds, being mm -hmm. heavily edited like this, is just going to fall into this narrative mm -hmm. uh, that they're pushing that whatever comes out with these DC leaks, it has been altered mm -hmm. by Russian hackers. Mm -hmm. And so that is the problem with, with putting out uh, stories like that without checking the sources, without taking a little common sense, doing a little more digging, because you can, you can go in and, and basically write what George Soros purportedly said. That would have been 
big time news, it would have made it to the New York Times, frankly, if that had been true. It makes everything else that we're saying illegitimate if we are proven to be false on that one thing. When, you know, we're reporting the truth as best we can and really coming to you the best research that we spend, frankly, hours doing. And, you know, thankfully, we, we caught that and that was an easy one. But speaking of fake stories regarding Soros, you want to talk about a fake story? We're talking about a man who backs up and props up protesters to destabilize places like Ukraine, for example, and he'll use the same group of protesters. I was looking at footage once, and you could see one protester two years later, he's in, he's in Ukraine protesting with the Maidan. It's like, wait a second, who the hell is this guy? You know, you talk about fake stories, they are out there, but, but for us, we do the best that we can bringing you the truth, you know, as it lies on the earth, and, you know, that's just the way that it is. So there are fake stories out there, but, uh, you know, we're talking about a master of lies there and his Hungarian right. accent very easy to muddle it's it's difficult to understand what he's saying half the time <laughs> well and there's a very good article uh, that was put out yesterday Rachel Alexander wrote it and she points out how the left is busily planting fake red meat conservative news sites so they are um, th these are stories that are being specifically targeted to conservatives and they're just they're too good to be true and that's why they call them red meat just throw throw the dogs this they're going to salivate over this red meat and so these are um they're not even satire news sites half the time mm -hmm. and but basically according to this author she was told by an insider that the strategy is to fool so many conservatives into spreading a ridiculous fake article that finally a prominent elected official will fall for it then the left is going to pounce on the official and makes them look foolish and or an extremist and she also says even putting out uh, fake stories about Donald Trump like he's a hero because mm -hmm. there there have been several stories being put out about all this heroic stuff Donald Trump did right. that turned out to be false and that ends up just making him look bad as well right so you know it, and the way that news works it's an aggregated thing so uh, if you're a reporter in the field you you look at the AP you look at what other people are reporting on and you aggregate information that's how it spreads quickly but the fact that they're losing the narrative they're losing the information more so badly that they resulted in planning fake stories because, oh, their racist bigot crap is no longer working. Now we have to actually go 180 degrees and start spinning fake crap so that maybe right. one of you idiots will fall for it. Right. And that's and it's also to just sort of destabilize the whole information <laughs> system that's out there, because now you don't know who to trust. And they're really pushing this narrative uh, that the Russians they were behind the DNC leaks. They pushed that out there right away with no proof. And then, oh, by the way, there's going to be an October surprise. They're going to be uh, releasing a lot of things on Hillary Clinton that are going to be very damaging to her. But we can't trust it because the Russians have already gone in and altered the data that's in there and the metadata with those emails. And so they're going to take a video like this and see say look see how we told you the George Soros material was altered this video is proof of that you can't trust anything that comes out about Clinton I mean this is it's pretty genius level she's so <laughs> desperate she asserted that the Kremlin was responsible for the alt-right movement here in the US I mean the woman is so freaking desperate she thinks that Putin is behind the alternative right you know <laughs> movement going on here maybe it's just people are really fed up with you and they see past you um, she she insinuated in, in a video earlier I was watching it that uh, Putin didn't have a soul to which he snaps back, I might not have a soul, but at least I have a brain. And uh, you know, um, they're, they're too smart to be doing this, Leanne. They're, they're not as uh, watered down um, as, as we think they are in terms of the truth that they have. Well, and that's why they facts. really, they're truly frightened right now. And that's why they're resorting to putting out these fake stories to just turning Russia once again into the boogeyman because that's all they have is they're going to stir up all this controversy that, oh, the Russians are trying to swing the election. They're they're coming after Hillary Clinton. He, he's in charge of the alt-right. Now, uh, Julian Assange came out and said that this is absolutely crazy. It, the claims are false and, and a conspiracy, in fact, to say that WikiLeaks is working on behalf of the Russians. And he goes on to point out how there are plenty of, mm -hmm. of stuff on WikiLeaks that it, it talks about Moscow and calls them out because he says that's not WikiLeaks isn't for any political body. It's to mm -hmm. just expose corruption within the political sphere. I think she's getting that. So Julian Assange was featured on English speaking Russian. She might be trying to link that because of that, of but he in no way is a paid Kremlin actor. That's hilarious. If anything, 
you know, he's just a man who likes the truth like the rest of us do, and he's paid dearly for it. We're talking about a man that's held up in an embassy, and he has been for years, and he probably will die there because he likes the truth so much. So we need to kind of examine people's motivations, especially hers, this uh, very dark, bad actor. And uh, you guys sometimes don't like that term when I use it, but it's, it's the most polite way that I can say that in an international relations term without calling her a despotic devil woman. That's <laughs> what I really want to say. Uh, question people's motivation. That's, that's what I would go back to. Absolutely. And also check your sources. I know it's, it's very tempting a lot of the times to just go ahead and quickly share an article or retweet something, but you have to understand that there is a concerted effort, especially this election cycle, when the population is waking up, they're not being controlled by all of the, the information war that's out there, that they've tried so hard to push out propaganda. They see it's not working. So now they're actively working to just try and make you look foolish and discredited. And so then your friends um, on Facebook can make fun of you because there's they're saying mm -hmm. you know, you're a Trump supporter and you're an idiot that you would believe this this story. You can't even tell it's heavily edited or something mm -hmm. like that. That's true. So do your research, uh, do your due diligence, as, as we would say, and make sure. And even putting a simple link into Google or, you know, I'm really not a fan of Google, so I don't want to endorse them at this moment. But uh, doing your basic search would, would pop some things up for you that you might want to check repost. Yes. That's great advice. And if you do want to share any articles that you have thoroughly checked, be sure to hit us up on Twitter. I'm at Leanne McAdoo. She's at Margaret J. Howell. Margaret J. Howell, yes. And we love your information that's out there. But, you know, just make sure you check it first. And, of course, we will do our due diligence on our end. Well, that's going to do it for the show tonight. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure and hit the subscribe button. We certainly appreciate it. And you can share this information with all your friends. Get this story out there. Share this on Facebook because this is important. Let people know that there are actors out there trying to make you look like a fool. We'll see you tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central.